we know the population and median age intensities. And the data is given to us This is the population, and this is the median age. Okay, so we have the population and the median age, and the question is, what is, what is the correlation coefficient? So the first question is, what is R? coefficient of correlation. Please type them in your calculator and find R. If you don't know how to use your calculator for X and Y, um, ask me. But the other question that we have to ask ourselves, what is the uh, dependent and what is the independent variable or what is the explanatory variable and what is explained? They want to predict the median age for a city of that population. So it seems that for this people, it says estimate the median age for city. So uh, city of the population for these people, the researchers in this question, uh, they want to explain the age based on the population. So population is the explanatory variable and median age is explained. So this is explanatory variable. And this is explained, or this is predicted. This is the predictor. How do we know that? Because it says estimate the median age for a city of that population. So this population for them is the predictor and they want to predict the median age. Okay, so for every X you type these numbers and for every Y you type those numbers and uh, uh, you tell me what is R. 0.4503. Next question is what is your interpretation of R. We have to write a complete sentence. So we say, we observe a positive, because it's more than 0.25, we don't say weak positive, we say positive. We observe a positive correlation between population and median age. If you write a positive correlation, you'll get half of the mark. If you write a complete sentence, you will get full mark. Uh, next question is, what is the coefficient of determination? Please calculate the coefficient of determination and tell me. It's a point two zero two seven. So if it is like this, then we have to write it as zero point two zero two eight, right? Yeah. Next question is what is your interpretation of this R squared? Uh, 
that 20.28% of variations can be explained of 20% of variations of with the median age very good the dependent variable the predicted variable of the median age can be okay explained by variations in the population of variations of what the population population size right population size at let's say one percent level of significance Can we conclude that there is a positive correlation there instead of there? in uh, not even in is there a positive correlation between population size and median age of cities Notice that the, the claim is always about all of the cities. So to, to answer this question is that if this is the population of all of the cities, there may be a correlation in the population of all of the cities, but we don't have all of the cities. We took a sample of how many cities? 10, we took a sample of 10 cities and in those 10 cities, we observed a correlation of 0 0.4503, right? Yeah. So now there is a question uh, that we have to answer about all of the cities. Is there a positive correlation um, there? So how would you write that? R is greater than zero? Yeah, very good. That's the question that comes from the uh, claim that comes from the question. And now the rest is mechanical. What is the next step? Write the opposite claim. Very good. What is the next step? Identify. Yeah, which one is the null? The equal sign, the one with equal. the one that has equal sign is the null. The other one is the alternative. We accept the null tentatively, and then we think, okay, if the null is right, what do we expect in variations of sample correlations? And sample correlations would vary with a t distribution with a degree of freedom of. Minus two. Eight. Oh, sorry. Very good. Because we know the mean of the population size and we know the mean of age. Therefore, we lose two degrees of freedom. And if the null is right, the average of all sample correlations, you now it says that less than or equal to zero. So it's extreme case of equal to zero. Then the average of sample correlations should be zero. 
And now let's think about the rejection. If we, if we take a sample and we see that the correlation in the sample is negative, can I reject an all? If something here much no. less than zero happens, can I reject an all? No. What does the null say? Less than or equal to. Yeah. So the null says less than zero. If I see something less than zero, no matter how much it is less than zero, it's actually consistent with the null. So there is no rejection area here. Now, if I see something, a correlation that is very positive, is it consistent with the null? No. No, null says less than zero. So these are inconsistent with the null. These are the rejection zone and level of significance is 1%. So please go to uh, row eight of T distribution, 1%. What is the T critical? 1%, one tail, row eight. 2.896. The last thing is that we have to find out the T of our observation. The T of our observation. What is the formula for T of observation of a correlation observed? R times the square root of N minus two over square root of one minus R squared. Like that. Yep. Very good. R is 0 0.4503 square root of eight divided by one minus, what was R squared? 0 0.2028. So T of observation is? I got 1.4265. The same. Very good. So is T of observation here? No. Is it here? No. Is it here? Yeah. Okay. So this is T of observation. T of our observation is not in the rejection area. Therefore, we fail to reject them. Fail to reject the claim that the correlation in the population is less than zero and we suspend our judgment about the claim that the correlation in the population is more than zero. Notice that we got a correlation that is more than zero, but it's just a positive correlation. It's not a strong positive correlation. It's not that big. It can be accidental. We observed a positive correlation, but not big enough to be able to claim that, you know, we reject the claim that maybe it's less than zero. This kind of, you know, a little bit positive correlation can happen uh, by accident. Okay, now the other thing that you may face is make a judgment based on p-value. Calculate the p-value and make a judgment based on that. So instead of seeing if T observation is in the rejection area or not, we want to make a judgment about the p-value, based on p-value. p-value is the chance of what we are observing and all of those things that are more you know, significant than what we observed. So p-value in this case would be, this is our observation and all of the things that are you know, more significant than that stranger than our observation combined. So this is, this area is p-value area. 
uh, to find the p-value, uh, the, what was the t-observation? This is 1.4265. So we are at 1.426 standard deviations far from the mean, and we want to find the chance of those things that are that strange and more strange than that. So we have to go to T table, one tail, and the, please read the headers of one tail of T distribution for me. And one, 0 0.05, 0 0.025, 0 0.01, 0.005 and 0.005. Row, we are interested in row eight, right? So read the numbers in row eight for me. 1.397. Oh. 1.860. 2.306. 2.896 and 3.355 and 5.041. Okay. So what is the meaning of this? Let's go step by step and understand the meaning. If my, if our observation was at five standard deviations far from the mean, such an observation would have a p-value of goes to 0.005. Yeah. If our observation ends up to be at 2.3 two sta standard deviations far from the mean, the chance of that thing to happen and all of those things that are less than that to happen is? Zero point zero two five. Uh, now, our T of observation is this is our T of observation. T of our observation is 1.426. For 1.86, the chance of those things that are more than 1.86 is 5%. The chance of those things that are beyond uh, uh, 1.397 is 10%. So for our observation, the p-value would be, is between, so what is the chance of something that is at 1.426 and more than that? It is between um, these two numbers. So it's between 0 0.05 and 0.1. Right? Yeah. Therefore, therefore, the p value is more than alpha. What was alpha? Uh, zero point zero one. Yeah, it's way more than alpha. Okay, and what we are observing and things like that, things as significant as our observation has a chance of more than 5%. In other words, there is more than 5% chance that what we, ob we are observing 
has happened by accident. Sorry, why is it 5% again? Uh, because it's between 5 and 10%. Therefore, it is more than 5. Something that is more than 5% oh, okay, yes. and less than 10%, it is more than 5% for sure. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, in other words, there is more than 5% chance that what we are observing has happened by accident. Therefore, our observation is not significant enough. You know, there is you know, between five to 10% chance that what we have observed is just the result of sampling variability. Uh, therefore, we fail to reject. Would we have to write this whole thing out on the exam? Therefore, we fail to, uh, therefore we cannot make a judgment basically, neither reject and all nor accept the alternatives. Therefore, we cannot make a judgment. And that means that we fail to reject an all and we suspend our judgment about the alternative. Are we excited to write this on the final? Yes. For those questions that are relying on p-value. Do you mind going down so we can finish writing, Amir, please? Thank you. I mean, and we have to do regression equation as well, right? Yeah, I've not done that yet after okay. this. Okay, yeah. Would it be incorrect to say that as the p-value is greater than the level of significance, we cannot reject the claim that the correlation in the population is less than or equal to zero? Yeah. Yeah, you can say because p-value is more, repeat your sentence, because p-value is? As the p-value is bigger than the level bigger than of us, significance. Yeah. Because the p-value is bigger than the level of significance, we cannot we make cannot any judgment. Yeah. yeah, we cannot reject and we have to suspend our judgment and all of those conclusions, yes. Okay. Yeah, the key is that the p-value is big, bigger than significance level. So it's not something significant. What is the linear regression model of the relation. Of course, the answer is like always, y hat is equal to bx plus a. Therefore, y hat is, what is b? Go to your calculator, tell me what is B? 0 0.2702. 0 0.2702X. And what is A? 31.383. And uh, notice that X was the uh, population size, right? Those numbers are from the calculator that we did, right? Yes. So this is the population size. And this is the median age. So now the question says, um, for every thousand in increase in the population size, how much the median age increases? This is the slope. And the meaning of the slope is that for every, notice that X was in thousand.
for every thousand increase in the population size we observe uh, on average uh, 0 0.2702 year increase in median age. Do you want us to write that? I notice that so the bigger cities, they have, you know, older population on average. And the next question is that, what do you predict the median age of a city with, okay, so that we choose a um, city of 7,000, okay? A city with 7,000 population would be, okay? So basically we write down our Y hat again. Y hat was 0.2702X plus 31.383. And now we want to predict the median age, notice that this was age and this was the population. So we have to write down 2702. What is the population? 7,000. No, seven. Notice that in the regression table, it was based on how many thousands it is. So X here is seven. seven. Plus. 31.383. So this is our prediction for the median age of a city of size 7,000. 33.2744. Yeah, I got the same. Very good. Let me show you the big picture, what we did. We did a lot of things. We had sets of data. We found coefficient of correlation, coefficient of determination. We did test of hypothesis. We found the regression line. We found the p-value. 